I'm with Dave Doyle, who is a retired chief geodetic surveyor from the National Geodetic Survey. We are at the NSPS MAPS Geospatial Conference where the Board of Directors meeting of NSPS just concluded. Dave is a non-voting member of the directors representing AAGS because there is a need that NSPS has recognized for a strong linkage between NSPS and AAGS. So Dave, uh, I want to talk to you because of your background about the Geospatial Summit that NGS, the National Geodetic Survey, held at this conference where they talked about the upcoming 2022 data. Now the first thing I learned is that you will get spanked if you call it that. Um, so explain to us what it's going to be called and maybe what it means for the surveyor at the local level. Sure, sure Joe. This, uh, first of all, NGS did a tremendous job putting on a, a series of programs detailing the various elements of the plans for this new uh, uh, spatial reference frame, genetic reference frame plan for 2022. Um, it's a modest distinction, if you will. You can quite easily say it's a change in datum, but the, the classical approach to a datum, horizontal or vertical, was almost always sort of a static definition. I have a monument in the middle of some survey, of some farmer's field. I have a set of coordinates that are associated with it, and they rarely, if ever, change, and then everything else is related to that. Um, in the world that we live in now, uh, d using global technologies, whether it's the global positioning system or the other systems that are part of the global navigation satellite systems, uh, we can now achieve certainly centimeter level positioning, if not better, you know, over tremendous distances. Well, this implies a more sophisticated approach to producing coordinates. And so the, the, the context now is referred to as a reference frame. Well, the distinction between a, a geodetic, a classical geodetic datum, horizontal or vertical, uh, is now to add in those components that allow us to take into account plate tectonic motions, uh, earth orientation parameters, uh, and, and a variety of, of other conditions, you know, that are not generally associated with those classical datums. In addition, historically we've always referred to datums as one of two types. Uh, a horizontal datum, this is how we get latitude and longitude, or state plane coordinates or UTM coordinates. So we have a vertical datum, this is how we get heights. That's not really the case anymore. Uh, with, with geospatial positioning, with, with space-based positioning, we get a three-dimensional coordinate system, latitude, longitude, and ellipsoid height. And of course, if we want to convert that to state plane coordinates, we can, we can certainly do so. So we have an, a height component, a component that didn't previously exist with the horizontal data. So it's not truly horizontal anymore. It's three-dimensional. Uh, and the heights, instead of being realized, as it were, by classical leveling, which is the, the technique that's been used for well over 200 years, uh, now those heights will be determined purely through gravity measurements, which is ultimately what you want to do because gravity is going to dictate where water goes, and fundamentally that's the most important thing. So this is a rather significant change uh, for the United States, and to one extent or another, it's probably the most aggressive approach of any community I've, I've had the pleasure of dealing with anywhere in the world. Uh, so it's going to be an exciting time, but it's going to be a very challenging time. Um, and that leads to the issue of these legislative uh, problems. With the development of the NAD 83 uh, in the mid-1980s, 48 of the 50 states adopted specific legislation that says, oh, if you're going to work in Alabama, I mean, not Alabama, if you're going to work in Maryland or you're going to work in, in North Dakota, you're going to use the North American datum of 1983, and here's how that's defined. And there were a number of, of attributes that were associated with that. Well, that's very restrictive. And now these, the new datum is going to change positions, both horizontally and vertically. Right? So we're going to see roughly, roughly, uh, about a three-foot change in, in horizontal positions across the country. And depending upon where you are, uh, change in heights will be anywhere from almost zero to as much as three feet 
or uh, and maybe a little bit more in some areas. So some areas are going to be you know, greatly affected by these changes. And developing legislation that works for each state so that the users in that community um, have, have a standard that they can hold to um, is going to be an important uh, effort. Um, the development of any kind of legislation, whether it's at the federal level or, or at, the, at the local level, is a very intensive project. So the surveyors here, uh, those representing uh, the surveyors and the National Society of Professional Surveyors, are they're going to have to take the lead role in this. And that's where the American Association for Geodetic Surveying is partnering with them uh, to educate the surveyors so they get a better, better idea of, of what the changes are going to be about. Probably as important, the rationale, why we need to make these changes, as opposed to just, oh, there is going to be a change. You know, why? So the, the surveyors can go explain to their clients and the people that they need to support you know, the whole rationale behind these changes. And as part of that, ultimately, ultimately, to draft legislation that uh, will uh, uh, categorize how uh, the reference frame should be used in whatever state you happen to be involved in. So this is a fairly long-term process, I'm, I'm sure. And we we'll, won't we'll really see all of this come together until at least 2022 when the datums are out, and perhaps a little bit after that as well. So it sounds like uh, local surveyors will need, over the next five years or so, to start to understand more and more about what these changes will mean that they will have to put into practice. But it also sounds like they need to get involved with the local organizations they belong to to identify things like state statutes, um, uh, perhaps county and city regulations that adopt things like datums and coordinate systems to be thinking about how they would modify them to make them appropriate when the new reference frame is in effect. Yeah, that's, that's absolutely correct. In fact, just, just yesterday I had a call from a local surveyor right here in Virginia who was dealing with uh, some, some new um, zoning regulations that had been drafted and he was questioning the, the verbiage that was in there. So these are the kind, you're exactly right, these are the kinds of things that will have a trickle down effect in virtually every community, and not every, not even every community. I mean, you're also talking about many, many other institutions, uh, DOTs, um, uh, park services, or you, you name it. The, the litany goes on and on and on. One of the distinctions I think we see now that we didn't see in the past, um, having been a part of the development and implementation of the North American Datum of 1983, in 1883, in the mid-80s, what I noticed as, as I went around the country is that there were really very few users of any high accuracy horizontal data. A few federal agencies such as the Federal Aviation Administration, the Corps of Engineers, U.S. Geological Survey, and a small handful of state DOTs. Well, that's not the case today. Uh, the global positioning system has just radicalized all that. Now, there, there's, I, I doubt there's hardly a community in this country um, that isn't sitting on top of mountains of very high accuracy geospatial data that they, that's been collected now for uh, possibly as much as 30 years. So this transition is going to be rather significant for many of them. And it's not just going to be a trivial thing of, oh, I have a datum transformation here, plug this number in, I get some new numbers. Uh, there, there are the tentacles that reach out from all of these things that go down to very likely as much as uh, you know, the, the person who's reading the water meter, you know, where the coordinates of where the water meter are, or certainly 911 responders, and you know, these kinds of things. And, and so this is going to have a, a very significant impact. Thank you very much, Dave. This certainly gives everyone, I, I would hope, uh, much food for thought. And as time goes on and more information is developed, uh, we, I'm sure we'll be touching base with you again, as well as some of your peers in AAGS. Pleasure, Joe. Anytime.